Hi, this is Dr. Stacy Shillington. How are you? I hope you're having a great day, enjoying your summer, and I hope that you are completely relaxed. But if you're tuning into this, you probably are not, because the subject of today's Facebook Live is, do you have acne and stress? And if so, I'm gonna show you seven ways to relax, seven scientifically proven ways that will help you relax. So I chose this topic today because I'm feeling pretty anxious myself and it's August, which is typically a month of where everybody's kind of like taking it a little easier. And I'm up in this beautiful place up north with my family doing stuff that I love and yet I'm still feeling anxious and I'm still feeling stressed. And you may be like, what? Or you may be like, I totally get it. And the thing is, is that our body gets addicted to the chemicals, stress chemicals that we produce. And for me, um, I mean, stress is a crazy, has been a crazy issue for me my whole life. I'm very high strung, very much perfectionist. I take things to heart. I'm like, I just, I am not, I've not had really great skills at managing my emotions and my stress throughout my life. So much so that two and a half years ago I had a massive heart attack. Like, I'm talking really not good with stress. So the past two and a half years, I've had to learn a ton about stress and really change my life so that I'm not affected by stress so much. So I've learned a ton, but I still get these moments where I get that like, anxiety pit in my stomach and I just don't know what to do. So I actually do know what to do though, <laughs> which is why I'm doing this, which is why today I'm going to share seven scientifically proven ways to help you relax. So stress and acne are very closely related. In fact, there are four different ways in your body biochemically that stress creates acne. Number one, which is probably the most you know well-known one, is that stress increases cortisol. Cortisol causes insulin dysregulation in the body, and that increases an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase, which leads to increased sebum, increased oil production in the skin, which leads directly to acne. So that's number one. Number two is when you're stressed, something called substance P increases in your body and it's been shown that acne sufferers actually have more substance P than non-acne sufferers. So when we're stressed, substance P increases 5-alpha reductase, this very same enzyme, which leads to increased acne. So that's the second way. The third way is that stress will increase prolactin and prolactin can also increase 5-alpha reductase. Like, I sound like a broken record here. And number Four is that stress will stress your adrenal glands and produce more DHEAS, which leads to acne. So can you believe it? There's like four different pathways that stress can lead to acne. So if you have acne, it's really important to understand stress and to deal with it as well as you can. So the number one thing that you know is important when you're dealing with stress is learning how to transition from your sympathetic nervous system to your parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is your fight or flight. So the best way I can describe this is if you're in the forest and you meet a bear, your body is going to recognize that as a danger signal. It's going to excrete, well there's hormones in your brain, neuro peptides that are going to signal the release of cortisol from your adrenal glands, cortisol and adrenaline. The adrenal glands are little glands that sit on your kidneys. And this triggers the response in your body called the fight or flight response. And it, occur, it happens when we need to be on, we need to be taking care of business and doing stuff. And most people in our culture are in this fight or flight the system perpetually. We're not meant to be in it for a long period of time. It's meant to be used while we're running away from the bear or while we're dealing with that acute stress. And then once that acute stress is over, we're supposed to transition back to our parasympathetic nervous system. So what happens is that we're continually exposed to different stresses, 
and we're continually in this sympathetic nervous system. And after a while, our body forgets how to transition back to the parasympathetic nervous system. It is no longer a natural thing for our body to do. And that's what happened to me. I got caught in my sympathetic nervous system. I couldn't get out of it. I just couldn't. And the thing that would bother me the most is when I'd be like uptight, people would say, why don't you just relax? And I would be like, I don't know how to relax. Like, I really don't know how to relax. If somebody put me on a beach, you know, with, I, I still wouldn't know how to relax. I'd lie there for a minute and they'd be like, oh, I feel weird about this. I have to like get up and walk around and talk to somebody or do something. I couldn't just be. And one of the ways that I'm going to teach you to transition to the parasympathetic nervous system is to tone a nerve in the back of the neck and it's called the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve regulates the parasympathetic nervous system and when we tone it, when we work on this vagus nerve, we're able to transition to our parasympathetic nervous system a little easier. So, are you ready? I'm gonna share seven scientifically proven ways to transition to your parasympathetic nervous system. You're gonna like really laugh when I tell you the first one. The first one is have a cold shower. So, you might think that that is the absolute worst thing you can do and how stressful is it to have a cold shower, but it actually feels amazing afterwards and it directly tones this vagus nerve on the back of your neck. There's um, in nat naturopathic hydrotherapy, which we study and we use with many patients, is something you can do to get the benefits and you're what you do is when you're in the shower, you're in hot water for three minutes and then do a cold water blast for one minute. And repeat this three times. So three times, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, and you will get the benefits of toning the parasympathetic nerve and transitioning to your parasympathetic nervous system. And I've been experimenting with this this summer. Whenever I feel really stressed, I actually go jump in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually works. I come out and I feel a lot better and a lot calmer. So cold water tones the vagus nerve. And the second one is having a positive connection with another person. So having an interaction where you really feel heard, you really feel understood, you really feel loved, you really connect with that person. That is another scientifically proven way that we can transition from the sympathetic nervous system to the parasympathetic nervous system. So if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling upset, call somebody that you know you can connect with, really connect with, and that will help you relax. Number three is singing. And I, didn't, I don't think I sang for years. I mean, I don't have a really great singing voice at all, so I completely avoided singing, which I think probably made my singing voice even worse. But when I had kids, I started singing again, singing to them. At first it was pretty croaky, but it got better as time went on. And singing again, scientifically proven to help transition um, parasympathetic nervous system to parasympathetic nervous system. And it's all in the fifth chakra right here when you think about it. Singing is fifth chakra and the parasympathetic nerve is actually in the fifth chakra as well. The vagus nerve, I mean, so singing. And then number four, which is my favorite, it is so, it's a life changer, and I know you've heard this a million times, but I'm gonna say it again, meditation and deep breathing. This is a sure way to transition from sympathetic to parasympathetic, and, um, I remember before my heart attack, I did a lot of yoga, tons of yoga, but I never actually meditated. I never actually sat down with my legs crossed and focused on my breathing because I was too anxious to do it. And then I had my heart attack and I realized that I had no choice. I had to sit there, I had to focus on my breathing because if I didn't learn this technique, there was a possibility that I would not live to see my children grow up. So talk about a motivator. I sat there, it killed me, but I learned how to meditate. How do you do it? So simple. Sit in a comfortable position. You want your spine erect. Close your eyes. That 
some people do it with their eyes open. I find closing your eyes helps to calms me down more. And then just start breathing normally and focus on your breathing. And I count my breaths to the count of 10. I just go inhale one, exhale one, inhale two, exhale two. And inevitably, this is the thing, your mind is going to wander. You're going to start thinking of things such as, what am I gonna make for dinner? I don't know, you can think about anything. I would think about what paint colors I'm gonna paint a room or what I'm gonna wear that day. And that's okay because that is the nature of the mind. It's to wander, it's to think. But the job in meditation is to recognize that your mind is wandering and to come back to your breath. It's that simple. I mean, you don't have to feel bad that your mind is wandering or you know, not adequate because you're not able to focus on your breath for 20 minutes solid. I mean, that's not going to happen. That's an unrealistic expectation. So start meditating 10 minutes a day. That's it, it's not really that long. Um, but the key is to do it every day for three weeks because research has shown that after meditating daily for three weeks, your body will learn how to transition from sympathetic nervous system to parasympathetic nervous system with much more ease. That is the key. Um, and then other things you can, so that's meditation. There's three other things that you can do to transition to the parasympathetic nervous system. Number one is reflexology. If you can't afford to get a reflexology treatment or you don't have time, Simply massage your foot. I mean, it's really easy. Just massage all over, put on and sit in a nice quiet room, listen to some nice music, or sit in a nice bath and just massage your feet. There you go. And the other two you're probably going to need a therapist to help you out with, but ear acupuncture and cranial sacral, th cranial sacral therapy. Those are the other two. So that's it. Seven things you can do this August to help you relax. So when somebody says, just relax, you know what to do. These things really work when practiced consistently. So, to recap, seven things to help you relax, cold shower, positive connection with others, singing, meditation, reflexology, cranial sacral therapy, and ear acupuncture. They all have great research behind them. So. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I am here to help you clear your skin. Check out my website at www.naturopathicbeauty.com. I guess I don't have to say www anymore. We all, we all know. Okay, you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram and give some great skincare tips there every single day. And my seven week clear skin course is coming up really soon. I'm going to share all my secrets with you. I've been treating acne patients for a decade as a naturopathic doctor. So I've got some great secrets. I know how to do it. So that's it for today. Have a wonderful week. Relax and please share any comments with me that you may have. Have a great day.